Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. In this video, I'm going to talk about a new peer-reviewed paper that just came out. Um, and it's basically called World Scientists Warning of a Climate Emergency 2022. So this group of scientists collected a whole bunch of signatures and wanted to give a warning to the world about um, climate change. And they did this first in 1992, so 30 years ago. And periodically since then, they've repeated this. And the latest version um, has just come out in a peer-reviewed paper. And that's what I'm going to discuss in this video. So this is the um, some of the different... Uh, things that the this uh, that the world scientists group looked at um, it's divided up into three main sections a couple of different sections actually there's a section on what's happening to the earth system and there's a section on sort of human responses and what we're doing about it so i'm going to go right to the paper and talk about this uh in great detail so because it's uh these things often come out before the COP27 or before a COP happens, a climate conference of parties. Um, I'll be heading off uh, towards the end of this week on Friday to uh, head to uh, Egypt. I have a stop over in London and, uh, well, in Halifax first and then in London and then I fly to uh, Egypt, to the conference, to get there the day before it starts. So, anyway, this is a special report, or peer-reviewed paper. So, we're now at Code Red on planet Earth. And just for fun, I checked out the origins of Code Red, the term Code Red. So, Code Red was a computer worm that was observed on the web on July 15, 2001. It attacked computers running Microsoft's uh, a Microsoft web server. It was the first large-scale mixed threat attack to successfully target enterprise networks. And the name actually came um, from, well, there's a couple other things that it was. So that was the computer virus, computer worm, in uh, 2001. Um, also, Code Red is well known in hospitals. It alerts hospital personnel to respond properly to a fire while keeping patients, visitors, and the general public from undue alarm or panic. Um, that's also Code Red. Um, and where the name came from, um, Code Red was a soft drink, actually, um, that was released in stores in May 2001 nationwide in the United States as a permanent flavor. It was basically a Mountain Dew, um, Mountain Dew flavor, Mountain Dew drink. Um, and there's other meanings for Code Red. Uh, but, you know, I think we all know what it means. But any, oh, there's an ACDC um, Code Red, an ACDC song, Code Red, so... Code Red, How to Protect Your Savings from the Coming Collapse. Emergency codes in hospitals and things like that. Okay, so there's all of these um, different things, but that's sort of the origin and interesting aside. So we're now at Code Red on planet Earth. Humanity is unequivocally facing a climate emergency. The scale of untold human suffering already immense is rapidly growing with the escalating number of climate-related disasters. Therefore, we urge scientists, citizens, and world leaders to read this special report and quickly take the necessary actions to avoid the worst effects of climate change. So 2022, as I mentioned, it's the 30th anniversary of the World Scientist Warning to Humanity that was signed by more than 1,700 scientists in 1992. Since this original warning, there's been an about a 40% increase in global greenhouse gas emissions. This is despite numerous written warnings from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change 
and a recent scientist warning of a climate emergency with nearly 15,000 signatories from 158 countries. And that's described in a paper by Ripple et al. in 2020. Current policies are taking the planet to around three degrees Celsius warming by 2100. You know, take that with a grain of salt. You know, I think, you know, we'll, we'll reach three degrees, you know, far before, you know, the time period that they give here. But three degrees um, warming, it's a temperature level that the Earth has not experienced over the past three million years. And it's the rate of change. Of course, the heating is happening very, very quickly. Um, and the consequences are becoming increasingly extreme. Outcomes such as global societal collapse are plausible and dangerously unexplored. And I talked about this recent paper, Kemp et al. 2022 about the possible collapse of organized global society. So motivated by the moral urgency of this global crisis, here we track recent um, climate related disasters, assess planetary vital signs and provide sweeping policy recommendation. Okay, so you know most of this stuff. Climate change has increased the frequency and intensity of severe weather events around, across the world. It's likely because of a variety of interconnected processes, including an overall warming trend, changing precipitation patterns, rising sea levels, and changes in the jet streams. Rapid warm Arctic warming uh, makes the summer jet stream in the Northern Hemisphere more prone to meandering and becoming blocked causing heat waves, flooding, droughts, and other disasters. Rather than just being more frequent, some extreme weather events are now more intense or sometimes occur closer together in time and space. This compounds the damage, right? Pl places get hit with an extreme weather event and they barely have time to recover or they don't recover and then they're hit again and hit again. So these compounding effects are increasing the damage and decreasing the recovery time. It, all, it, may, it may increase the likelihood of extreme risks such as simultaneous gr global failure of crop yields across multiple major food producing regions. We're now regularly seeing events and disasters that previously occurred only rarely. Tragically, these disasters disproportionately harm poor people in low income regions that have minimal contributions to the buildup of greenhouse gases. For example, in the summer of 2022, one third of Pakistan was flooded, displacing 33 million people and affecting 16 million children. Other disasters this year include terrifying wildfires in Europe, back-to-back -back cyclones, flooding in Eastern Australia, numerous rivers drying up in China and Europe, and also in the US, an extraordinarily intense hurricane striking the Southeastern United States powerful storms and extensive flooding in Bangladesh and India, mega fires and a continuation of the decadal drought in the Western US, um, massive flood, and it goes on and on and on, massive flood in closed Yellowstone National Park, severe heat waves and heat domes in many parts of the Northern Hemisphere. So there's a table where there's a lot of these things given and I'll, at, the at the back, you know, bottom of this paper, and I'll show that. So these serial and simultaneous impacts are testing society's limits as they greatly reduce resilience and ability to cope with other crises. Um, okay, so basically, um, and then there's a lot of different vital signs um, and they're in these different areas. And I'll, sh I'll talk about them by looking at the figures. So they're in the areas of economics, energy, of course, um, global mean greenhouse gases and temperature, the climate, climate impacts, climate policy. Okay, so there's all of these different things and I'll, sh I'll show that, I'll show them in the plots in a minute, but there's of course untold human suffering in pictures. So, you know, we have drought over on this side, various places, floods on this side. So one extreme to the other and, and often places experience both. They'll have a drought one year, massive flooding the next year, and then drought again. And I call this uh, weather whiplashing from one extreme to the other extreme, back to the back and forth, back and forth. Okay, um, a couple, uh, you know, one thing that's very interesting uh, to consider is, 
Um, you know, let me read read this part here. As has been demonstrated by the surge in yearly climate disasters, we are now in a major climate crisis and global catastrophe with far worse in store if we continue with business as usual. As such, there is more at stake today than at any time since the advent of the stable climate system that has supported us for more than 10,000 years. Here we stand at the precipice with the opportunity to make such an immense difference for life on Earth. Now think, consider this, approximately 100 billion people have lived and died over the two million year history of humans on Earth. Okay, that's 100 billion people have lived and died over the two million year history of humans on this planet. And there are potentially trillions of human beings who will someday exist, whose fate depends on the choices we make today. The very future of humanity depends on the creativity, moral fiber, and perseverance of the eight billion of us on the planet now. Rather than lose hope, we must equitably reduce ecological overshoot and immediately pursue massive scale climate change mitigation and adaptation. This is the only way we can limit the near-term damage, preserve nature, avoid untold human suffering, and give future generations the opportunities they deserve. Okay, so let's have a look at the plots here. Okay, so this is the, th these are climate-related human activities. Okay, so we've got human population. Okay, it doesn't go back. Uh, the years here, 1980 to 2020, are the main tick lines here. The first and last major tick line, the dark line, tick lines. Okay, so we have human population, and on this recent scale, um, you know, I always think of it as increasing exponentially, and it still is, but on this scale, you can't see the exponential increase. So here we are. We're very, very close to 8 billion people. The total fertility rate, which is, this, this is the number of, average number of births per woman, um, has been dropping. Okay, it's been dropping over time. So that slows down the population growth. This is the ruminant livestock uh, population. These are billions of individuals. So look at how it's increased. We, we're over... Um, this is 3.6, 3.84, we're, we're about 4.1 billion individuals, livestock. Okay, think of the impact on the earth of all these livestock. This is about half the human population. Per capita meat production, kilograms per year, that's kilograms of year per person. And you can see it's hit 45 and it dropped off a bit in the last few years, 42, 43. So it's not increasing at a steady rate. So as more and more people become vegan or vegetarian, eat less meat, you know, maybe once per week, um, this hopefully, this, hope, this trend hopefully continues rapidly. This is world GDP, a little pause here for uh, recession, I guess, pause here uh, for the uh, COVID shut, shutting down the global industrial production and it's picked up again up here. Okay, that, so that metric is still growing. Global tree cover loss, millions of hectares per year. Very strong trend upward, but if, at least it's backed off from, from the highest, but it's a, still a strong trend upward. That's millions of hectares per year lost of global tree coverage. The Brazilian Amazon forest loss in millions of hectares per year, you know, it was very high, you know, close to up, pushing up to about 2.8, um, you know, in some previous years, and it dropped off significantly, but it's on its way up again, hopefully with Lulu uh, winning the, um, the uh, Brazilian election, the second round. Um, hopefully this is restrained and goes back down again. This is global energy consumption in exajoules per year. So oil, coal, 
gas, solar wind, at least solar wind is on this on the chart up to more recently it it wouldn't it would show us a flat line on this type of scale, but it's starting to increase. So hopefully this increases exponentially and we can get all these others to drop. But they're uh they're not yet and they're they showed the drop from the uh virus years and now they're back trending up again and the profits for the different fossil fuel companies just came out recently and you know record high profits yet again air transport this is billions of passengers carried per year is increasing exponentially and a big drop from the covid um, years and you know probably the most recent data is showing that it's recovered but this is last number this is a 2020 number it's probably back up to here again or something like that total institutional assets that are divested this is divested in trillions of us dollars that's divested out of fossil fuels and uh you know it only started it was zero until you know here which would be about 20 uh that's about 2013 something like that and then it started to be measurable and it's increasing, been increasing rapidly. This is uh, CO2 emissions, gigatons um, of CO2 equivalent per year. Um, and we're up to, um, so we, we, we reached about uh, 38 or so, a dip from COVID and now it's back up. Uh, we've got to slash CO2 emissions Per capita, that's CO2 emissions, that's tons of CO2 equivalent per year. Um, this is glo on a global basis, so it reached about 5.1 or something. You know, it dipped down and now it's, it, and then it's sort of he headed back up. I mean, you know, it's, uh, yeah, so, so uh, we need it to dip down and to stay down and to go way down. Greenhouse gas emissions covered by carbon pricing. Okay, um, so this is of all the greenhouse gas emissions, how much are covered by carbon pricing. You know, we're pushing about 22.5% or so, so the trend is in the right direction. Carbon price, which is the dollars per ton of CO2 emissions, we reached a high of, of just over 30, dipped down to about 8 or something, and it's heading back up. It's about, uh, it's under 15 dollars per ton. The higher this is, the less incentive there is to uh, have to, to have combustion and create these emissions. These are fossil fuel subsidies, billions of US dollars per year. Uh, you know, globally it was 600 billion, you know, dropped right down here. It dropped as low as 200, but now it's well over, you know, 450. So it shot back up after the uh, virus uh, years. Governments that have declared a climate emergency, the number of governments, and uh, of course this has to be um, governments, uh, whether they be not just national governments, but state or province governments, regions within countries, and also cities, municipal governments. I think it must include that because the numbers, you know, pushed over 2,000. Okay, so we'll go back to, this is a time series of climate-related responses. Okay, so CO2, this is parts per million. We pushed up to 418. Okay, we, we're, the curve here is bending upward still, going exactly the wrong way. We haven't bent the curve, so all of these climate conferences, et cetera, et cetera, have come to naught since we have not pushed the curve. So... 1992, 91, 92, Rio, we've had COPs since then. You know, this is, we've had, while well, we've had COPs every year, large climate conferences, CO2 is still going up. So this is the single most important metric, I would say. You know, methane flattened out here in the 2000s, but look at the terror, and it's actually rising at record high rates. This is very concerning, the methane levels and the rise in the last few years. Nitrous oxide, uh, again, steadily upwards and accelerating. You know, the curve is bent upwards. Surface temperature anomaly change in degrees Celsius. Okay, so we're here. We've had uh, three years of, uh, of uh, 
La Nina, you know, when we get a, um, La, when we get a uh, El Nino, you know, we'll expect to set new global record here. The, this is it's spiky because of internal variability. This is the minimum Arctic sea ice in terms of millions of square kilometers. This will be in mid-September and, uh, you know, trending down rapidly. We thought the ice was going to vanish here, but there are some feedbacks that are keeping it around for a bit longer. Uh, but, so, um, you know, we'll see, see what happens. Greenland ice mass change. This is Greenland ice mass loss. All of this is uh, this this loss of mass uh, leads to sea level rise, and you can see, you know, how it's a pretty steady trend downwards. More and more Greenland ice mass has lost, been lost. Antarctic ice mass change in gigatons. So we've seen, uh, you know, large increase in loss of Antarctic ice mass as well. Very strong trend downward. Glacier thickness change. This is meters of water equivalent. So glaciers on uh, mountaintops, et cetera, are all rapidly vanishing. Um, the trend is strongly down. If you look at the global average, ocean heat content, 10 to the 22nd joules unit. So, you know, we're looking, we started measuring it here really, and uh, look how quick, how strongly it's rising, right? Over 90% of the heat gain by the earth is occurring in the oceans in terms of ocean warming. And I've talked in a number of videos recently about how that ocean warming affects the ice masses on Greenland and Antarctica, how it affects the methane class rates that are locked into the sediments, and how it affects the AMOC, the global ocean circulation patterns, um, things like that. This is the ocean acidity, the pH of the oceans, uh, you know, eight point uh, 8.115 or so here, um, and the drop here, the oceans are capturing more and more CO2, which is basically forming carbonic acid when it interacts with H2O with water, and that's causing the ocean pH to drop significantly. Sea level change um, relative to 20 year mean in millimeters, so sea level strong rise upwards there is fluctuation from year to year this is the area burned in the united states the millions of hectares per year and you can see you know this is an average of a bunch of years here an average here so you know there's a lot there seems to be more variability but we have a lot of very bad years um global tree loss tree cover loss due to fires millions of hectares per year um you can see the rapidly rising trend and uh, of course the the u.s is a large fraction of, of the global billion dollar floods in the u.s events per year you know sort of a low level here and at a higher level you know and there's some years that are particularly that are double sort of the the uh mean Extremely hot days relative to 1961 to 90, and that's percentage of days per year, and you can see a rapid rise. So we're getting more and more extremely hot days, um, and that has huge impacts on society. Dengue virus vector capacity, average percentage change from 1950, and you can see more and more rise in virus vectors. Okay, so there's all of that, and there's a there's a table here talking about recent climate disasters in 2022. So let me, you know, you probably you probably heard of a number of these, but I bet there's you probably haven't heard of more than half of them, <laughs> right? There's just so many. So I'll just go quickly over it. So with the start of the year, so January through September. Um, so this is ongoing. Many rivers in Europe have run low or dried up, partly because of the worst drought in 500 years and intense heat waves. Climate change has likely played a significant role in this crisis by increasing the frequency and intensity of droughts and heat waves. February 2022, La Nina and climate change contributed to record-breaking rainfall on the east coast of Australia. Flooding damaged thousands of properties killed eight people. 
February, March, record breaking flooding on the northeastern coast of Australia, leading to standing water, which promoted the spread of mosquitoes that carry the Japanese encephalitis virus. February to July, um, number of people affected by drought in Kenya, Somalia, Ethiopia, um, increased from 9.5 million to 16.2 million. March, severe drought in the southern plains of the U.S. put the winter wheat crop at risk. Uh, March to April, deadly heat wave in India and Pakistan killed at least 90 people, contributed to widespread crop losses and wildfires. Climate change made this event 30 times more likely to occur. Okay, we're doing uh, quick, quickly doing attribution studies when we have a, a disaster to see how much of it is likely due or exacerbated by climate change. April, climate change caused extreme rainfall in eastern South Africa, triggering flooding and landslides. April to June, dust storms in the Middle East. You know, May, uh, heavy rainfall in northeastern Brazil, landslides, flooding. Um, June, severe storm in Yellowstone caused two rivers to overflow, destroying parts of various roads in Yellowstone. Uh, Western Europe, heat waves, China, extreme heat waves, Bangladesh, worst monsoon flooding in a hundred years, extreme rainfall again in Australia, floods in Pakistan uh, again, that affected roughly 33 million people, including 16 million children. China, extraordinary heat, heat wave, which may be the most severe that has ever been recorded globally. Okay, we haven't heard too much about that. Major drought caused 66 rivers to dry up and led to a significant decline in hydroelectricity generation. Uh, large scale crop failures and wildfires in China. But a lot of this we don't hear about. California, extremely hot temperatures, uh, heat domes. And then Hurricane Ian hit Florida and the Carolinas. Um, we had Hurricane Fiona um, up, you know, in, in Canada. It doesn't even make this list, right? So there's more and more stuff on here, um, right? So I think the key, one of the key things, um, apart from all of the data and stuff, and I'll just repeat it here, because this is a very important issue. Okay, how much we have at stake? So... We stand at the precipice with the opportunity to make such an immense difference for life on Earth. 100 billion people have lived and died over the two million year history of humans on Earth. Okay, so think about that for a while. There are potentially trillions of human beings who will someday exist, but their fate depends on the choices we make today. The very future of humanity depends on the creativity, moral fiber, and perseverance of the 8 billion of us on the planet now. Okay, so that's, uh, I think that's the most important message and statement um, in this paper. And I just want to show you, um, there's a site here called Climate Visuals, which is referred to in the uh, paper I've just been discussing and they have um, let's look at the image library so there's all kinds of images on all of these different topics okay um, it's, a, it's an interesting website so let's click on ocean visuals which I think is one of their newest categories here so it's called climatevisuals.org Okay, so this is uh, the ocean theme. So you can go through. Okay, and look at these, you know, get get all kinds of different images. So if you have, you know, projects or you want to put together reports and show specific things, um, you know, and there's descriptions on each of these and you can enlarge them to, uh, full screen. Um, these are, most of these images are Creative Commons. Okay, so, you know, there's a description, a man maintaining a solid barrier wall around a small group of graves with headstones. 
including the grave of his grandson on land which is just about which is just about the coastal flood level in Damak in Indonesia so it's the impacts the sec you know it, it pertains to impacts of climate change also on resilience um Climate visuals principles show real people, not stage photo ops, tell new stories, show local but serious climate impacts, show climate causes at scale, climate impacts are emotionally powerful, understand your audience, da da da. Okay, so, um, and it talks about who's uh, taken the picture, the photographer, and uh, their social media accounts register here to download or obtain images. So these images, this is uh, Creative Commons. Okay, so images like this, you know, are extremely powerful. Let's pick another one here. A diver underwater swimming through a kelp frond forest over a hundred foot tall in clear water. I've done this stuff. Uh, this is, I've dived here actually. This is this, the city's so this is uh, the Channel Islands off uh, Los Angeles. Okay, um, so I've dived in this exact, probably this 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 exact location off Carmel, I believe it was, in hundred feet water. You know, swimming. It's like you're through and going through a, a forest underwater, and it, it's amazing these kelp because the leaves are huge, right? And there's little um, there's little bulbs little cylind little circular bulbs which contain air on part of the plant so that basically supports the plant upright in the water so its leaves can be much much larger and you know it doesn't need a um it doesn't need a, a stem like to support it like a tree right it just needs something to hold it anchor it down to the ocean floor and then it can grow all the way up so you know kelp is an amazing uh sink for for carbon dioxide so so uh yeah these, these climate visuals are are fantastic so i highly recommend you go to this group climatevisuals.org and uh, use use some of the um, images for for your own um, reports and projects etc okay well thank you for listening uh, please check out my uh my website um there's a new post here um and uh yeah please consider uh donating to my paypal to support my research and videos um i also have a gofundme to uh you know raise funds to cover my trip and i'm leaving in um leaving in uh, about five days to uh fly to the the cop to get there the day before it starts and uh, I also have a uh, Patreon account, so please consider um, becoming a patron to support me that way, if you like. So um, also make sure you follow me on Twitter. Um, you can just search for, I'm, for me, Paul H. Beckwith, on Twitter. Also on Facebook. Um, if, you're on, if you follow me on Twitter, then I will uh, you know, fo also follow you back. And... Uh, um, then there's, uh, you know, my Facebook page, and I also I have a page and a, a, a group, um, and uh, I'm also on um, LinkedIn and Instagram, things like that. So please, uh, you know, follow me on these uh, social media outlets, and thanks again for watching, and uh, yeah, we'll chat soon. Bye for now.